Good day, everyone, and here I am again, Dr. Mark Mendoza, giving you some autopsy analysis of the case of Christine Becerra. Uh, first principle in autopsy, inimbansable bago the autopsy. That's a no-no because you have already removed some of the essential evidence that can be find, find, found in the uh, body in the body of the person. No? Now, what is an autopsy? Autopsy is a methodical investigation as to the cause of death. At isang beses mo lang itong gagawin at dapat hindi na the second time around because it will invalidate and it makes more complicating the first evidence that you have uh, proposed. Kaya nga, there is lapses on how you have managed the body of evidence in this case. So, maraming pagkukulang dito and we have to point out and we have to learn from this. Now, as to what is really the cause of death according to the autopsy report is aneurysm. Ano po ba yung aneurysm? Ruptured aortic aneurysm ang nilagay as to the cause of death yung sa uh, autopsy report. No? Let's analyze what is aortic aneurysm rupture. Uh, unang una, what is aneurysm? Ito po yung uh, weakness of a blood vessel. No? Humihina po yung blood vessel. This can be congenital. Okay. Kung naalala nyo yung case ni Isabel Granada where he, she has a ruptured aneurysm, sa kanya naman, it's part of the uh, brain, no? cerebral ruptured aneurysm. No? Now, yung uh, aneurysm may weakness sa isang blood vessels at prone to uh, tendency to uh, rupture. No? Uh, pwede siya sa aorta, which is the big blood vessel, that is the name we usually call for the big, big blood vessel. It's an artery, a giant artery, and then meron siyang thoracic part dito sa chest, meron din siyang cerebral part, and meron tinatawag na AAA, yung abdom uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm. Pero in her case, this is a thoracic, thoracic aneurysm rupture yung po ang nakalagay. Now, let me point out that there is a forensic expert in the country who have mentioned that uh, ruptured aortic aneurysm of the thoracic should have should have a uh, bleeding within the site and that was not mentioned in the report. No? Another thing, yung questions ng bruises or mga uh, pasa daw na nakikita, which is here, nakikita natin, may part na sa bahagya ng legs niya. Okay. Now, the thing about this, no, if you are trying to establish a case, a case of a rape, no, usually mga bruises na nakikita mo, in some parts na pwedeng hawakan to restrain the patient and usually bilateral on both sides like uh, dito sa arms or dito sa leg or merong point or indication na tinali ito. So this was not mentioned in the report. No? Uh, 
isolated lang nakita yung bruises. At uh, pinaliwanag naman ito in the totality of evidence that uh, uh, if you would see something like this, kung makikita natin ang paghawak uh, kay Christine sa CCTV, there was a time na ang pangit ng pagkahawak sa kanya and then ang pagdala sa kanya sa stretcher ay uh, not the proper way, no? Dapat uh, hindi stretcher, it was a wheelchair. So, uh, sabi nila, the bruises were sustained based on uh, uh, yung paghandle ng body ni Christine during sa uh, transport nito from a wheelchair. It should have been better kung uh, transport siya sa uh, stretcher, no? So, not likely a not likely or typical of a uh, not likely typical of a rape, no? And besides, may lapses na ito nga binabanggit na should you entertain something like a rape, may dapat merong DNA analysis at a rape kit na dapat ginawa sa kaso nito. That's why a forensic expert in our country mentioned these lapses also and uh, classified the report as incomplete. And there is a uh, reaction that uh, things like this are lessons for us, uh, medical legal officers or um, investigators that to preserve the evidence and autopsy should be done once, isang beses lang, and do it correctly at saka methodically. Dapat ganun sana. As you're speaking, uh, Dr. Bertun, we're showing images of, yeah, you know, bruises on the body of Christine Desera. Um, based on your knowledge, your expertise, where could these bruises have come from? All right, as described in the autopsy report, is that there seem to have been some identified contusions or blunts uh, and abrasions. These are what you call blood or scar. Uh, very superficial on the skin. Uh, Okay. Um, as described, they are just found on the lower extremities. So this would be the thigh, uh, the lower limbs, and finally the very small, very superficial. Uh, they don't display depth, and therefore they are really not specific. They do help uh, one thing, you know, how what did it happen? But for you. Understand what they mean. You have to know most of the circumstances, and I understand that there was some inebriation or intoxication involved. Uh, so, one possibility she may have uh, uh, gotten this uh, prior to, you know, having been found unconscious or unresponsive. Uh, when she was being brought out. 
way that they're also surmising that the aneurysm could have been caused by the assault itself. Um, how can this be proven? Again, just looking at that document, how could this be a disposition of an aneurysm? And you have to consider the lack of things. You have a 23-year-old young woman. An aneurysm is described 